pretty excited to be part of the lineup this morning and uh, just feeling a lot of gratitude um, for this opportunity to talk about and share about um, these mind tools, these amazing mind tools that, um, that Living Miracles has available for, for all of us to use. And, and for me, it's really about being able to, to extend this incredible gift that I've received from using the tools, getting to work with the tools, extending the tools, growing the tools. I mean, it seems like it's just like a, a never ending gift that just keeps on giving. And um, I really wanted to use this very first show just to talk about what I envision for um, Free Your Mind and uh, a little bit about my journey, uh, a little bit about the tools, and then um, really about the whole purpose of this show and the way that I would love to see it unfold um, uh, every other week that uh, Free Your Mind is uh, going to be aired. So. Yeah, just a little bit about my journey and, and how um, the, the mind tools came into my awareness. Um, I feel like just in my spiritual journey that I, it's always been a, que a how question, like how is healing, how does healing happen? Happened? And one of the first things that it, where it came into my awareness is that I, um, I was born with a, a heart murmur uh, in uh, yeah, it was like uh, my heart would beat irregularly and sometimes it would even stop, you know, and I would lose breath and kind of just go into sort of this a freeze mode. And um, in my in my 30s, um, there was a medicine man on the reservation that I grew up on in Fort in Idaho, and he did this like ceremony and did this work on me. And it was like, amazingly, it went away. And I, I've never had it since, but it was kind of like started uh, in my mind, just this questioning of, you know, how did that happen? <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. I was told I would never, ever, that would never go away. And so that was really the beginning of my journey and in, in, into healing, actually. And um, witnessing several kind of miraculous healings with the medicine man and and then um, my own journey uh, going into like alternative healing I really was into energy work and polarity therapy and theta healing and crystal therapy it's kind of all these different things but really what I could see and just using all these different modalities it was like it was more like a hit and miss situation sometimes it would work and it was fabulous and other times on and other people it wouldn't work so it was kind of like huh that doesn't really if it was truly healing it would seem like it would be lasting in my mind and and so when i <clears throat> got a hold of the course of miracles and i saw that line in the course where um jesus says you know all healing lasting healing is healing of the mind that really sort of stopped me in my tracks like wow <laughs> i just um, yeah, it was kind of like, wow, all of these things that I tried and, you know, no wonder that um, it wasn't working. So that, that really was an eye opener for me. And, and really uh, back in 2007, when I, when I read that in the course, like it really shifted things around um, in my mind. And, and I really feel like just my, the life of Laverne, I seem to really build a strong case for being a victim. And, and growing up as a Native American, my mom's Native American, my dad is white, kind of had this like pretty convincing scenario of being a victim, like seemed like, you know, the Indians in America had gotten screwed, their land was stolen. We were always like seeming to be like on the short end of the stick and not having jobs, high poverty, alcoholism, drugs, and kind of all of this stuff going on in the reservation. So you know, I was kind of even playing that out on a community level where I was working for my tribe and um, really trying to advocate for, for Native American rights, both at the national level and at the state level, and also through journalism, because I have a background as a, as a, a newspaper reporter, too. So it was kind of within all of this, this backdrop that I've, I 
started diving into the course and studying the course. And in Idaho at the time, there I really wasn't able to find many other people that were studying the course. But I did find out about um, a retreat center in Utah, um, about three mo- three hours away from um, where I grew up in the area that I grew up in. And so I started just traveling there um, occasionally and joining with some people there who were studying the course. And, and that retreat center happened to be um, uh, owned at the time by Suzanne Sullivan, who is now an elder with, uh, with Living Miracles. And, and it was a couple of years later that she invited David Hoffmeister. Um, and, um, and I met David and I really felt like what he was talking about uh, and how he was able to to really um, describe the the practical application of the course really resonated with me and uh, and even then I can just see that a lot of my questions to him were how questions like okay that sounds really great that this you know that it's all about our beliefs in our mind that we're generating everything that we're seeing in this perceptual world it was like okay, well, that's great, but how do you get these, you know, how do you get the, these, what you're seeing out on the screen back into the mind? So, so that was really the introduction to me of, uh, of the instrument for peace, actually. And, and I had um, purchased a copy of Awakening Through A Course in Miracles. And in the back of the book, there's actually a form um, that is a, you just fill it out and it's the instrument for peace. And, uh, but the thing about it is it was like, okay, I used it once. Now I got to erase everything and use it again. So it was kind of like this, you know, it seemed like uh, I would have to make copies of it or, you know, try to be able to use it again and again. But one of the first, I just remember looking back, like one of the first um, beliefs that uh, came up for me just in the context of, of meeting David and the Course in Miracles was um, a belief that my family or the people that I, I love would suffer as a result of me taking my steps on the spiritual journey. So, um, and in particular at the time, my husband, who really wasn't into the Course, he supported me being involved in the Course, but, you know, um, yeah, he wasn't into it himself. And and so when I just told him one day that I really wanted to just go fully for God and and, you know, that I was basically leaving him in my life in Idaho. It was pretty be- much a big shock for him. And and for me, you know, just having that belief of now he's really going to suffer, that um, I had to question that belief uh, quite extensively. And it felt to me like the instrument for peace was was just a perfect way of doing that. So even though I knew intellectually that you know that everything in this world is is actually i'm projecting out there you know to actually have the experience of being able to 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 know that and feel that in a deeper way so that i could change my mind i actually felt like i needed steps and it's it's interesting because i was just talking to a friend last night and and uh you know he was saying yeah i've i've studied you know non-dual teachings i've you know I've studied this teacher, I've studied that teacher, I've, you know, spent years on this. I can tell you every single metaphysic uh, that's out there about non-duality, but at the end of the day, I I don't feel happy and I don't feel peaceful, you know, and so really just knowing all of this stuff doesn't get you home, so to speak, and I feel like what gets us home really is, is doing the lessons, is using these tools is joining with our brothers is bringing up whatever it is going through that darkness to the light. I mean, that's what the course says. It's very non-compromising in that way and telling us that it is our mind that is generating everything in the world. And truly, you know, wouldn't it be beautiful if we could really see that, you know, that this, we could really make a game out of it, that we could watch our feelings and and notice if we feel that tinge of pain or a contraction or whatever like okay there must be a belief down there that's ready actually to be looked at and to be released and boy you know once you are able to to see it in that way you know what a change it is from when it was you know growing up you know we were never given these 
tools. I mean, we were never told that it was our thoughts and beliefs that are causing us pain, you know, so of course we would try to avoid, you know, do everything we can to just avoid or distract away from whatever's going on. But, you know, now that we do have tools and now that we are, you know, able to see that there, there's, there are thoughts and beliefs running things underneath the show, so to speak, then, then it is, you know, that we're able to sort of go towards that. And um, I just came across a, a beautiful section of the course the other day when I was um, listening to David's um, reading of the text and, and the uh, lesson. And it's in um, chapter seven. It's called The Unbelievable Belief. But this is, I felt like it really sum, sums up the, for me, the motivation for looking at these beliefs and, and the importance of, of that as well says, do not be afraid of the ego. It depends on your mind, and as you made it by believing in it, so you can dispel it by withdrawing your belief from it. Do not project the responsibility for your belief it on it onto anyone else, or you will preserve the belief. So that is really talking about projection, like, whenever we think somebody out there or something out there is doing it to us, it actually keeps it in place. So, I mean, that is an important part of this journey. When you are willing to accept sole responsibility for the ego's existence, you will have laid aside all anger and all attack because they come from an attempt to project responsibility for your own errors. So really with these mind tools, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but all it really is helping you do is to take whatever you're seeing out on the screen back into your minds, like, oh, wow, I'm doing that. <laughs> but not in order to feel bad, and it's not in order for you to feel guilty, but in order to bring back that thought so that you can actually do something about it. So having the, accepted the error as yours, do not keep them. Give them over quickly to the Holy Spirit to be undone completely so that all their effects will vanish from your mind and from the sonship as a whole. I mean, it really is that simple, truly, but not in a metaphysical understanding way. It actually, you have to feel it. And this is part of this process of really like praying into, okay, what am I feeling? And, and describing those, giving yourself the time and the spaciousness to say, okay, I'm feeling angry. No, actually, I'm feeling rageful. You know, uh, am I feeling sad? No, I'm feeling depressed. It's like, you know, really honing in on, on what the feelings are, you know, honing in on what the thoughts are, who's to blame, who you think is to blame, what you're afraid is going to happen into the future. Um, and then really kind of the, where, where the rubber, rubber meets the road, so to speak, is the, the actual be belief itself. But really, the whole process and these mind tools are all um, for this process that Jesus describes in this section of the course to be able to take it off the screen, back into your mind so that you can see that you're the one that's, that's doing it to yourself and then, in, and then giving it over quickly to the, to the Holy Spirit. So, so it's like a real practice and it really is like, like exercising, you know, a muscle that you really, you know, have to continue using these tools much like you would, you know, practice doing anything, uh, a new skill or, or just even just, you know, working out or whatever, like you really have to practice it. And ultimately, you know, you're, you're going to be able to do it in an automatic way whenever you feel that tinge of pain and always knowing that the tools are right there to help you and support you uh, when when you need them and and I know for myself even though I, I use the tools all the time there are certain times where I'm really feeling you know I'm convinced that something is happening out on the screen like I can't I, I need help you know I need a walking through the process and and also, the, the tools are, are, are aware of what the obstacles are in the mind so that it's asking me the, those questions, you know, like, 
do you want to be right or happy? <laughs> you know, like, and a lot of times we want to be right, <laughs> you know, and that even just knowing that is like good news because, because then we can, when we get tired of being right <laughs> or, you know, the pride wears down or whatever, then we're able to go back and, and, and complete the process. And one of the things that's happened just even in the Living Miracles community because of um, these mind tools and, and because of, you know, Spiri is that it really has become part of our, the culture of Living Miracles. If somebody has something come up, one of the first questions that's asked is, has, have you done a mind tool? Have you used the instrument for peace, levels of mind, spiri? Have you done a spiri? And, and the purpose of that, even if there's, there's still an upset there, is, is have, you given, have you paused and given yourself time to, to go within and, and ask yourself what the thoughts and beliefs are? Because if you're looking outside for, oh, you tell me what's wrong with me, that's, not, that's really not what the course is all about, and that's not really what Jesus is calling on us to do. It's really this invitation, no, go within and, and really start asking these questions and, and getting in touch with what's going on in the mind. And, and this is truly empowering because, you know, if, if we're just afraid and we ask Jesus to take the fear away, you know, that's, it's like Jesus is very clear that he can't do that. You know, the only thing that he can do is to help to remove the conditions that are giving rise to the fear, like, and what are those conditions? Some belief, some thoughts in the mind that are, that are false, that we're thinking are true, and then we're projecting it out into a world. So, I mean, this is just hugely empowering. Um, we know that all intellectually, if we've been following this path for any length of time, but to actually put it into practice, I feel like that's what Living Miracles is all about. And, and even the people who say, I, how do I stay connected with Living Miracles? How can I stay connected with you guys? It's really by doing this work, <laughs> you know, and, and if you're not able to move through an upset, um, like with the Spiri process, uh, those of you that use it, you know that there's a prayer and support at some point along the way if you're not able to move through something. It is about a joining with a brother like to help us to really fine-tune uh, what it is that we're looking at because it's so helpful um, to join at some point, but, but it's the invitation with these tools is no, give it a try yourself really practice, really pray, really feel into, you know, what, what it is, where the contraction is. And, and it's just truly, in my mind, um, like this Spiri uh, video that I showed at the beginning, being a beginning of the show, like, wow, you really have, you know, these guidance with you wherever you go and you can use it that way and you can really use it in a, you know, inspiring, um, empowering way and the app that we're developing now is is really uh that that uh app that you see in the video like okay how you feeling type it in not only are you, are you going to be invited to use the the mind tools but also you're going to be given content like okay i really think that 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 the problem is out there help me to see it differently so these videos youtube's um, audios, um, other movies, suggested movies, all of this will be coming uh, at you and suggestions as, as ways to help, help you to see it differently. I did want to spend a few minutes just talking about what all of this is based on. What, is, what are all these mind tools based on? And, and I know that many of you have seen the, um, the levels of mind diagram. If, Nicholas, can you put that up just as a point of reference? So uh, we'll give you the, the link to this, uh, this form uh, at the end of my show, but I just want to, uh, to have um, this up on the screen for all of you to see because this is what Spiri is taking you through. This is what the instrument for peace is taking you through and, and the levels of mind itself is, is really a map of the mind and, and how, it, how the mind works. Um, something that this, this particular diagram um, was a download that David received directly from Jesus, and it is just extremely powerful. Um, I could say that sometimes you're able to go through a, an upset just by 
looking at this diagram and seeing that it, you know, that there's something you're seeing on the perceptual screen is, is because of a belief. But I, I find myself that it's more helpful to actually use theory or, or the instrument for peace itself. So out on the outer layer there, it's called perception, is whatever it is that the upset is at the time. And you just, all you need to do really is to just pay attention to how you feel. And at that level, if you ever feel a tinge of pain, whether you're, you know, out on the street, you're talking to somebody or watching a movie, that's where the pause, you know, an invitation to like pause to pray and to actually identify what the upset is. And, and it's just really usually a, an obvious thing. <laughs> you know, I got fired today. You know, that's, it's, it's like not rocket science, but we can't like, oh, I know that I'm, I feel like I'm, a, I'm separated from God. <laughs> you know, the mind is, it doesn't do anything. We have to really work with where the mind is at. I got fired today. That's the perception. That's what I think happened. Um, and then really dialing into what the motion is. I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I'm angry. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed. And again, uh, the emotions are important. And, and there are actually um, sample emotions in Spiri. And that's one of the nice things about Spiri is it's giving you examples all at every step of the way um, so that you can fine tune you know, your feelings and thoughts. I, I think that at the thought level, my boss is to blame. Um, again, we can't like uh, basically ghost over uh, the blame side of things. Usually we think someone's to blame. Um, and a lot, oftentimes it's ourselves. We think we're, we're the ones to blame. So we just start right where the mind is at. And then also what is it that we might fear will happen in the future with something like getting fired, it might be that I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to, you know, be out in the street. <laughs> so, yeah, just really dialing into what the, what the um, fear is in the future. And then, really, the belief is, is where, in my mind, most of the prayer should go. Like, really getting touch, in touch with what it is I think is, is true. Like, um, you know, and maybe in this case that, you know, I'm, I'm a loser. Like, I can't keep a job. I can't, you know, I, I really can't provide for myself. I'm just, you know, I'm a loser. And here's a, more proof, you know, I, that I can't even hold a job down. I can't, you know, I can't pay my bills. So, um, and then uh, in this particular process, we really want to get in touch with what we what we desire, what it is that we wish would happen. And, and typically, and most of the time, it's the exact opposite of what happened. So, so again, in this particular example, it could be that I, I wanted to keep my job. Obviously, you know, I, if, if I had, would, what was able to keep my job, then I wouldn't have to be looking at all of these feelings and these fears and blame and blah, blah. But we can see that when we have a tool like this, um, it's actually, you know, the purpose of this whole world is really for these beliefs to come up. And here's a good example. Wow. Under this, under this particular upset is this belief that I'm a loser, which I'm ready to actually question. And that's, where the, this process takes us at this point of, uh, you know, what is the belief that I think I have? What is it that I wish had happened instead? And then, then we're asked in this process, do I, you know, do I want to keep this desire uh, or do I want the peace of God? Do I want to keep this belief that I'm a loser or do I want the peace of God? And, and in that prayer, and, and if the decision is the peace of God, then really it's just really, okay, Holy Spirit, you help me to see this differently is really all that's needed. And that is the taking the responsibility back to the mind, seeing the part that, that I play in the problem, and then quickly giving, handing it over to the Spirit. And it's as simple as that, really. And I just want to say, too, like even in this process, you may have that belief, I'm a loser, come up 50 times. 
But each time, you know, the maximal healing is happening. Like in the Bible, I believe it says, you know, that you have to forgive seven times 70. <laughs> so that's a lot of forgiveness. But, but each time um, there is more forgiveness happening, if the forgiveness and, and the healing is happening um, each time that a, a belief is, is brought to the light and questioned. So, so this is the process. And I, and I just, again, I, I know that many of you who are watching the program today are already using this process. And I just want to encourage you to continue to do that. The ones that are just seeing it for the first time, give it a try. You're, you'll know whether or not it's working by how you feel. And never really judge if you feel worse after the process. It's doing its job, really. It's, it's not always about, oh, wow, I feel great. Sometimes you do feel worse afterwards. But just knowing it's kind of like a dirty pan. You know, you scrub and scrub and scrub and all of this gunk comes up out of the pan. But it's really because all of it's coming up for, for actually healing. So it's truly, truly a powerful process. And um, I know for me, I, I just got back down to Mexico. I was up in Camas, Utah for, for several months. And when I would notice that I would have an upset, you know, one of the things I'd love to do is kind of go on a spiry date. I take my phone and go to the coffee shop and just work through an upset. And it's just truly powerful. I'd be like, oh my God, I just had coffee with spiry and I just had an unwinding from some deep, deep belief. And yeah, it just kind of, I, I really feel like, you know, our show and this show is what I really truly want it to be is an opportunity for anyone that has, you know, wants to have that extra help in moving through an upset that I would love to, you know, and if you were open to like walking through the process with everybody else, it's just truly powerful. And we've done that in our community a number of times where we've come together and we've all done an instrument for peace. And then somebody who's still feeling the upset um, just comes to the front and, and we walk through it together. And yeah, just one of the amazing things that I've found with this process is that we all get to experience this healing. You know, it's like when I'm healed, I'm not healed alone. And it's just such an impetus. So if, um, if any of you want, you know, some additional help at the end of um, the program today, uh, I'll have my email and just go ahead and send me uh, an email. And uh, if you're okay with being on a show and sharing the process with everybody else, I, I just think it's just, it's wonderful. And it's wonderful for all of us to to share, share in the healing together. Okay. Well, thank you.